Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. Welcome back to the channel. We're doing another video for you on the domain and the range, but we're going to do um, some trickier quadratic functions. And we're going to start out this video by um, going over the previous video that we did on domain and range, which was a, uh, a trick that we showed you that you can use for more simple functions that have inverses. Uh, this is for a function that, you know, for example, maybe doesn't have an inverse or something like that, or it's a quadratic function, in which case we can uh, we can go ahead and show you how to uh, how to evaluate that using this really cool trick. Um, this video actually was uh, inspired by one of our newest members of our community. Uh, a viewer commented on a video and you know showed us this really cool function. Um, you know, and um, yeah, we decided to share it with you. So thank you. Uh, you know who you are. <laughs> and guys, if you're liking the video and the channel. As always, hit the subscribe button. It does inspire us to make more videos. Thank you so much for your engagement, guys. All right, cool. So in the last video, um, what we did is we showed you this trick where for a function, for example, y equals x minus 2, we can go ahead and swap x and y, okay? Solve for y. Okay, and the in, this is what, what we call the inverse of the function, and the domain of this function is equal to the range of the initial function, okay? But when we have a function, and we actually, it was a little bit of a mistake on our part. We did, we did explain what we did here. Uh, the, the purpose of the video was to show you the technique, and the, video, the answer that we got for this actually was correct. But um, the problem with using that, uh, that method, the inverse method for finding the domain and range with a function like x squared, okay, is that it doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So if this function, for example, was defined from 0 to anywhere on infinity only, or anywhere from zero to negative infinity only, the function would be one to one. For example, for every input of x, there would be an output of y. But in this case, two and negative two will give you the same answer. Um, for example, here and here, which makes it the inverse not exist. So for that case, or these kind of questions, hopefully that gives you actually a little bit of clarification on that video. If you were confused about that question, our apologies. But we're gonna show you now this really cool trick, how you can evaluate these quadratic functions using the discriminant so let's take a look at this question. We're asked to find the domain and range. The domain is actually really easy. I'm not really going to spend too much time on that. You should know by now that you can't divide by zero in a rational number. That makes it undefined. So in this case, you can see that because this is x squared plus 9, x squared can never be a negative number. Okay, so there's nothing that we can divide, uh, we can multiply by in order to get negative 9 here. So we know immediately just by inspection, we don't need to do anything that the domain is all real numbers for this function. Um, so let's take a look at the range because the range is actually why we're doing this question. And this is what I wanted to show you, okay, is uh, what we can do when we have a function like this is we can model it in the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, which is the quadratic form. And when we model it in the quadratic form, we can plug it into the discriminant and we can find the range from that actually, which is uh, quite an interesting trick. So let's take a look at this function. So we have y equals 1 over x squared plus 9. And if we multiply both sides by x squared plus 9, we're going to end up with y x squared plus 9 equals 1. Okay. If we go ahead and expand that out, we're going to have x squared y plus 9y minus 1 equals 0. Okay. And if we take a look and we correspond the coefficients in the quadratic form, the a, b, and c, to this, we, as you can see, they, it fits the same form. So what is our a value in this formula here? Well, our a value is the coefficient of x squared, which is y. So a is equal to y. We don't have a b. There's no, uh, there's no x here. There's only an x squared. But there is a c. We do have our kind of our constant here, which is 9y minus 1. So b is equal to 0, and c is equal to 9y minus 1. So now with this knowledge, what we can do is we can plug in actually to the quadratic equation and we can, uh, we can find the range from that. So if you'll remember, you should know the quadratic formula by heart or the quadratic equation, okay? b squared minus 4ac over 2a, okay? This is what we call the discriminant here. And the set of y values that satisfy the condition that the discriminant be greater than or equal to zero is going to be our range for the function. Okay, because as we know, under a radical, or under a square root function, this term must be greater than or equal to zero. So b squared minus 4ac over 2a. We have um, our b squared minus 4ac. Okay, that must be greater than or equal to zero. Knowing that this must be greater than or equal to zero, let's go ahead and plug our values in. Okay, so we have a, okay, 
we have our a, which is y, we have our b squared, which is 0, okay, so we have 4y, and then we have c, which is 9y minus 1, okay, this must be greater than or equal to 0, and if we come down here, we're going to expand this out, okay, so we're going to have negative, okay, 36y squared plus 4y must be greater than or equal to 0, and if we factor out our y here, okay, we're going to have negative y, and we can say we have 36y minus 4. Very good. And that's greater than or equal to 0. And if we go ahead and we calculate the roots for this function, okay, we're going to get that y is equal to 0, okay, and y is equal to 4 over 36, which is equal to 1 over 9. Cool, so that's uh, the roots of that function there. And now what we need to consider is we're going to need to take a look at on what interval of 0 and 1 over 9 is this function greater than 0. And once we know where on which intervals this function is greater than 0, the discriminant, we're going to be able to determine where the, our range is, because that is essentially our range. That's our set of data that where the function exists for the dependent variable. So let's go ahead and do that now. So um, I'm not going to write the whole table out, but you can go ahead and try this out if you'd like. Um, I'm sure you know how to generate a table like this uh, with these factors here and, and be able to generate whether or not uh, a function is positive or negative. That's a whole other topic, so I'm not going to go over that, but you can try it out if you'd like. So if you'll take the function and you plug in for this function here, okay, if our y value is less than 0, okay, we're going to have that the function, okay, so I'm just going to write f here, so the function will be negative. Okay, so that means that this function will be negative here, and that's unacceptable for us, okay, because that, that makes this function undefined. So what we need to do next is we need to test the function for y equals 0. Okay, so if we plug in y equals 0 into this function here, uh, what we're going to get is that our function is 0. Okay, if we compute the range of any, any number between 0 and y and 1 over 9, not including them. Okay, so any number in between here, we're going to find that our function is positive. If we go over to y equals 1 over 9, okay, we're going to find that our function is 0. And any number greater than 1 over 9, we're going to find that our function is negative. Okay, so if we take a look here, this is what we're looking for. Okay, and um, we're looking for our values here in which our function is um, either 0 or it's positive. And that is going to be our initial uh, kind of set of data for our range. But we do need to do one more test, okay? Uh, so we're going to say y 1 over 9. What we do need to do is we need to double check if these numbers, the extreme numbers of our, our range, are defined for our original function. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and plug this in. Okay, so when we have our function here, y uh, equals 1 over x squared plus 9, let's go ahead and plug in 0 for y. Okay, so we have 0 equals 1 over x squared plus 9. Okay, and as you can see, this function doesn't have any... Um, any solution, okay? So we can, there's, there's no solution here. Um, so that means that this zero value for y is not included in our range. Let's go ahead and try one over nine, okay? Equals one over x squared plus nine. If we go ahead and solve for this, we're going to find that x is equal to zero, which is a, it, which is a solution, and no solution. So that means that one over nine is included, which brings us to our final answer, okay? So we have that our range, okay? is the set of y data in which the discriminant was greater than or equal to 0. And we went ahead and we tested our 1 over 9 and our 0 value in our original function to see if they were included. And we found that 0 was not included. And we found that our 1 over 9 value was included. Okay, so uh, now we can write that our set of data for the range, the range for this function, 1 over x squared plus 9, is not including 0 to 1 over 9 including. So one thing I encourage you guys to do would definitely be to check out um, a, a, an online graphing calculator after you have uh, retrieved your answer and it's really what it's going to do is it's going to really help you you're, you're going to be able to visualize more functions if you just put more functions in and take a look at what they look like. Um, it's also going to give you an idea of where your answer came from. Uh, so it's going to give you kind of like a visual representation of what your answer is, which is also important. So if we go ahead and we type in y equals 1 over x squared plus 9, okay, um, as you can see, we have this function here that um, it's a little bit of parabolic up to the uh, y-axis, and then it 
trends all the way to infinity and negative infinity on both sides towards zero, but never actually reaching it. So if you you know you can just keep going forever, and you'll see that this this distance is getting smaller and smaller and smaller, but it never reaches zero. Okay, and if we go over back to the y-axis, okay, we're going to see that uh, we have our intersection here, which is our maximum point at zero and one over nine, right? Which is what our range was. One over nine is included. Um, but uh, if you'll remember from our answer as well, zero was not included in the final answer because this function never reaches zero. It only trends towards it asymptotically. So um, really good tip, really good trick. Always put your answers into a graphing calculator like this. I'll leave this link down below for you. And um, so I highly encourage that you do this for every problem that you do in calculus. It's really gonna help you out. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you learned something from that. I, I hope you learned this trick of you know using the discriminant of the quadratic equation in order to help you evaluate some tricky quadratic functions or some rational functions. It's a, it's a good tool to have in your in your toolbox there for, for your math and your uh, pre-calculus and even uh, calculus one in university. As always guys, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button. I'm Fred from Math Engineering. Take care.